Sec 1B, Environmental Science, Nicole Sumargo. So with our rapid technology development, more and more people increases their use of energy. But where does all of our energy come from? Well, most of our energy come from fossil fuels as it is cheaper and more energy efficient. Fossil fuels are natural fuels such as gas or coal formed in the geological past from the remains of living organisms. Although it is more widely used in Victoria because we have a lot of fossil fuel resources, environmental scientists have tried to find alternative energy resources as fossil fuels are bad for the environment. Fossil fuel energy, such as gas for example, produces an amount of carbon emissions to the environment. This contributes to the enhanced greenhouse effect. So what is enhanced greenhouse effect? So it's basically an increase in concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere due to the human's activities, leading to an increase in the amount of infrared or thermal radiation near the surface, which leads to an increase in temperature. This is very bad for the environment. That, that is why most of our environmental scientists are looking for alternative energy sources which is renewable and contributes less to the enhanced greenhouse effect. Non-fossil fuels would be the opposite of fossil fuels. It is the sources of energy not derived from the combustion of fossil fuels. Examples of non-fossil fuels would be solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, and etc. Today I would like to look more closely on the comparison of wind energy and natural gas energy and discuss it more. By studying MacArthur Wind Farm and Mott Lake Natural Gas Power Plant, I have found a lot of interesting facts about it. But first, I would like to briefly describe MacArthur Wind Farm and Mott Lake Natural Gas Fire Power Plant. So MacArthur Wind Farm is located in MacArthur, and it is a wind farm under construction in Victoria, Australia. It is built by a joint venture formed by AGL Energy and Meridian Energy. It is located on a 5,500 hectare site. It has 140 wind turbines and it will save approximately 1.7 million tons of greenhouse gases per year. It is enough to power 220,000 homes, cost at least a billion Australian dollars. Mort Lake Gas Fired Power Plant, it produces 500 and it produces energy for 550,000 homes. It is located in 12 km west of Mort Lake in southwestern Australia. Produces lower greenhouse gas emissions than existing, existing um, brown coal fire generators. So the advantages of wind power would be that it's clean, it doesn't produce any greenhouse gases, it is renewable and infinite energy source. Even though it is very costly to build, however it is quite cheap to run and it can also be mounted at a agricultural regions in which there is no requirement for a lot of spaces. It is approximately 40% energy efficient. It is much more efficient than brown coal, petroleum, oil and natural gas. For electricity. The disadvantages for wind power would be um, that it is expensive to build a wind farm. It costs one billion dollars for the building of um, MacArthur Wind Farm and it took approximately 10 years to plan. It is location dependent. The infrastructural and um, materials has been manufactured overseas and transported here at an expensive cost. It produces loud noise and the community might not feel so great about this. It also, um, the society might not like the change in the appearance of the landscape as well. So, with the natural gas, so with the get natural gas, it is 40% energy efficiency and it is very cheap and the gas burns 70% less carbon emission than other fossil fuels energy. It is quite reliable, like very reliable, comparing to um, other sources of energy. It increases by increasing the use of natural gas as a fuel for electricity generation. It will help Australia reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. It is easy to transport as it is light. 
A large amount of energy can be generated from one gas-fired power plant and it can be fired up and powered up quickly comparing to oil and coal. The disadvantages of um, natural gas would be that there is only 70% left of supply in Australia. It is not a renewable source of energy. It still produces an amount of greenhouse gases, although not a lot. It is flammable, it creates pollution, and it could impact the health of the community. So how is um, this energy extracted? Well, once a potential natural gas deposit has been located by a team of exploration geologists and geophysicists, drilling experts then dig down the potential location for natural gas. So usually it begins with drilling a well, and then these wells are purpose drilled for natural gas. But because natural gas is often found in the same deposits as petroleum, sometimes natural gas extraction is a side operation of oil extraction, or is pumped back into the well for further extraction. In a typical operation, the well is drilled, a concrete and metal casing is installed into the hole and a collection pump is above it. Reserves on the northwest shelf of Western Australia and in Bay Strait, and um, the efficiency of natural gas is actually 30% and it costs around $40 to run and get the energy. With the wind energy, it basically we get it from um, the turbines. So wind energy will turn the turbines and then it drives the generator which creates an electrical current. It is 40% energy efficient and it costs $70 to run. Transportation, so um, natural gas. So natural gas after being brought up from its subterranean deposit, the raw, normal, the raw natural gas is first transported to a collecting point. Then the raw gas is brought by pipes from all adjacent wells for pre-processing to remove water and condensate. Then it is usually pipelined to a processing plant. With the wind turbines, after it is um, converted into electrical energy, it would be transported with the um, power plant and stuff like that. So the use, natural gas is used as electrical energy and the source of energy would provide 550,000 homes according to more like um, data. So, with the wind power, um, they use large turbines to catch the wind, and when the wind blows, the blades are forced around, driving a turbine which generates electricity. So, with the wind turbine, <clears throat> it turns from kinetic energy to um, electrical, and with natural gas, it turns from chemical to um, electrical. So, yeah, I'll just... Now I'll just talk about the impacts on the economy, the social and the community and yeah. So the economic impacts for wind farm, like the positive side of it would be that it creates employment, approximately 900 construction and manufacturing jobs. The negative side of it would be that, that it costs a lot, it costs one billion dollars to build and it takes a long time to plan according to MacArthur Wind Farm. The social impacts would be the um would be that it creates employment and provides trainings for Australians. Um the project contributes to various community projects and it upgrade and um such as upgrading sport facilities, improving childcare facilities and etc. Although people might complain due to the unattractive landscape, but it creates a lot of opportunities for the communities as well. The um, environmental, the economical impacts for natural gas would be that it creates employment as well, same as that. Um, 
It is a multi-million dollar construction with opportunities for local businesses and the supply of goods and services. And the negative impact would be that it increases rental costs and and um food and fuels and stuff like that. The environmental impacts for natural gas would be that it produces carbon emissions, even though it doesn't produce as much as other fossil fuels, but it still produces carbon emission and it contributes to greenhouse gas um it contributes to greenhouse gas effect. So a contribution to um greenhouse gases emission. So natural gas. It produces small amount of carbon carbon dioxide and monoxide and um mostly methane. Um it made up of the methane is made up of twenty percent of hydrocarbons at least. We at least produce five point three billion tons of CO two emission per year and fifteen and we contribute to greenhouse gas emission by 15% by using natural gas. Wind power doesn't produce any greenhouse gas emission directly. International agreement, such as the Kyoto Protocol, it's by UNFCCC. It is aiming to fight global warming by reducing carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and sulfur hexafluoride. And as the conference in Bali, they talked about their actions to adapt to the negative consequences of climate change and devising ways to reduce greenhouse emissions. Then there is the Copenhagen Conference, which establishes an ambitious global climate agreement for the period from um, 2012, cause, because it expires, and Potsdam, Poland, 2008. Um, delegates agreed on principles for the financing a fund to help the poorest nations to cope with the effects of climate change. So our um, national strategies. Australia has um, has has launched um, so natural national strategies. Federal government expanded renewable energy targets. So the federal government has launched these to um, half, 20% of Australians' energy come from a renewable source by 2020. So they basically subsidised um, projects for, um, renew for building renewable energy and stuff like that. Like, example would be the MacArthur wind farm. So they were involved in that. And the state policies. So the Victoria's government efforts to sus sustainably manage water resources and climate change. So that's their policies in reducing um in reducing global warming and manage climate change, the negative effects of it. Local strategies. So the city of Melbourne, where I live, has strategized to adapt with climate change and by like loss of prevention and preventing um, community to be um, hot and stuff like that. So that's the end of my video and this is the references. I hope you liked it and thank you for watching.